All right, this is another edition of GoPro Gardening. I'm wearing the GoPro and I'm gonna be planting some seeds. If you saw our video yesterday, what I did is a basic video on some of the ideas of starting seeds. I showed you that I've got these Sunshine Daydream four seeds and hopefully you can see this on the video. Um, from over there, you're not gonna be able to see from up here. You can see there's tap roots on all of those. And you can see the little tail popping out. These have been soaking for far too long. Typically, I like to do 12 to 24 hours of soak. And even if you don't see that root, I'll go ahead and plant the seeds. This time though, I've been very busy. I had to record the video, so I needed to get a few things set up. I've actually let these soak for three days now. Um, so the most I would normally go is 48 hours, but seeds, especially good seeds, are pretty resilient. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. I've got the cups that I like to use, and these are just normal beer cups. And so if you look at it, this is the one I did in the video yesterday. It says Sunshine Daydream. And this was um, on 1-3 I wrote on there as far as the date that I'm going to plant. So I'll go ahead and change that today to 1-4 because I was going to do this yesterday. And I labeled it number one. And so I'm going to make the rest of these cups and I'm going to label them number one, two, three, four, as I've only got four seeds. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm here in the retail store and I don't want to have a ton of plant numbers. And I really only need one mom to make sure we have identical clones so we can do some side-by-side -side tests. I've got the Gorilla Grow Tent right here, you can see, and we just cleaned it out. If you see inside, it's all empty, and this is where we're going to set the seeds up. I've got one of the 315s on right now, so, um, all right, here's the dome that I talked about using, and um, the inserts. I'm going to use the dome because in here, if you were to look, it's got almost 0% humidity, and so I need the dome. If I had a whole bunch of other plants in there, because this is a big bedroom, and those plants had a lot of soil and a lot of water. It might be plenty humid in my tent. Or if you live in a more humid environment, you may not need this. Um, the main reason that I mentioned in the previous video that I use this is because if I leave my house in the morning to come here for work, I don't want my lights to dry the top of my soil out while I'm waiting for the seeds to germinate. And you can always put a mulch layer down to help with that. But some people don't do that. And if you do it too thick, the mulch can block the seeds from standing up. So some people do it afterwards. In any case, the main thing to be aware of is the top of the soil drying out. If you use a humidity dome, or heck, if you just go in there twice a day and mist it, it doesn't matter, just don't let it dry out, okay? Now the first thing that I'm gonna do is I've got my Chapin sprayer here. And so this is a three and a half gallon sprayer. I've got one gallon of water in it. And I use this for almost everything. If you don't have this, use anything, it doesn't matter. You could use just a spray bottle. I use the treatment in this to clean up the tent. And I do that all the time. It's a very good cleaning product. And so, um, Try not to, don't mind the tape noise. We've got a packing department back there and it's just a lot of packages going out. So uh, in here, I've got a gallon of water and you don't have to do anything. You could just do plain water, but I'm actually gonna soak this LOS Ollie 3.0. And normally what I do is, um, a lot of times I get lazy and I'll just take the soil, I'll put it right in the cup and then I will actually take the wand and I'll water the cup. Problem is, is if you're new to this, you might way over water. Um, Partially because if you water, the water's gonna run right out the bottom until you actually get it sponge-like and break that hydrophobic tendency of the peat moss. And so if you're trying to beat that and you come back and water once or twice and you're not used to the soil, you might actually make it like mud in here and then you're gonna have some problems with your seeds germinating. So if you're confident in your ability to water, just go ahead and water the cups after you put the soil in. But I'm gonna do it slow this time just to make sure that I teach you how to do it right and I'm gonna show you the proper moisture. So right now I'm gonna dump this 3.0 soil in my bucket. And I don't need a lot of soil, so I'm just gonna dump a little bit in because I don't need to waste and, and moisten all of this. If you wanted to, you could dump it all in, obviously, and moisten it. And the 3.0, it's a heavier soil. It's got top soil in it. And so some people are a little fearful using this to start seeds, but as long as you get the moisture right, it works really, really good. It's also got the grow stone, the larger version of that, so it's kind of a big chunk. If you're seeing those for the first time, if you were to wash that off, it's very porous. It's not a rock. That's actually the grow stone. It holds a lot of air in the soil. And then in here besides that, it's hard to tell, but there's actually quite a bit of pumice and rice holes in here to help with that aeration. Okay, so I'm gonna moisten this. Right now you can tell it doesn't clump at all. And so there's not enough moisture in here for me to get started. Um, before I get the water going, I like to add a few things. I mentioned the microbe complete. This has got the mycorrhizae as well as a few others that are very important. And I wanna get the mycorrhizae in contact with the roots as fast as possible. And so if you've got a mycorrhizal inoculant, you can just sprinkle it in the soil. I could sprinkle this in the soil, I could put it in the water. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and follow the basic protocol. I'm just doing a couple seeds, so instead of me trying to measure it out like per five gallon bucket, I think that's what I'm gonna do. 
Um, you can do whatever you want. If you look on here, it's one tablespoon for five gallons of water for your first inoculation. I'm only doing a gallon, so I could do like a teaspoon. And so instead of me trying to go find a teaspoon, I'm gonna pour just a very, very small amount right there in the soil. And that looked like a big cloud, but if you look in there, it's about a teaspoon. And so now I've got it inoculated. In my water, I'm gonna go ahead and add the yucca because I want to break the hydrophobic tendency of this peat moss that's in there. And the yucca is really high saponin, so it's gonna help it actually um, take the water on. And it's also got a high bricks. It's got a little bit of sugars in there that'll feed those microbes that we just added. So this is two to three milliliters per gallon. If you want, you can take a shot glass, measure that out. Since I'm just doing a small amount and I know it's forgiving, I'm gonna gloop a drop in there and that's gonna be my gallons worth. Pretty easy to do. Um, fulvic acid helps seeds germinate. Since these are already not having an issue, I'm not really worried about it, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and add some anyways and hope that they just take off really vigorously. And so normally on here, if you follow the directions, it actually says, let's see, seed activation, soak for 24 hours at 35 milliliters a gallon. And so a lot of people put this in their seed soak. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on the soil and I'm gonna do a little bit less than the 35 milliliters. So you can see there's the milliliters. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little less. I always do less. All right, dump that in. So now I've got the Thermex 70 and I've got the full power. I'm gonna add some of these RootWise enzymes and they're actually, this is a enzyme material that's gonna activate and speed up the colonization of these beneficial microbes. And so this one, if you look on there for the first application, um, it talks about three to five milliliters per gallon of water. And so, since this stuff's just so potent, I'm gonna go ahead and measure this one out and I'm gonna put five milliliters in. There we go. I'm gonna drop that right in here. So now I've got the Thermex I've got the enzymes, full power. That's pretty much it. The last thing that if you really wanted to add, it's just got some beneficial hormones. It's got some plant food in there. It would be an aloe vera material, whether you grow it at home or whether you're just using our flakes. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a very small amount. I'm gonna put it in my hand here so you can see like an eighth teaspoon per gallon. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a very small amount, drop it in the water there, you can see. And now I'm gonna shake it up. All right, shake that up. Okay, now I've got the nozzle off right now, so water's kind of like a hose. Since I've got some time here, I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these nozzles. I'm looking for the one gallon per minute. So let's see what we got here. That's a 0.5. I may not have that one gallon per minute. We use kind of like the parts from the broken ones here at the shop. Okay, there's a one gallon per minute nozzle. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on here and just screw it on very loose. Don't do that with bare feet. <laughs> All right, so shake this up, pump it. Because it's only a gallon, I'm gonna have to pump it pretty good. All right, there we go. Go ahead and evenly moisten this. Now my goal is not to overdo it. That would be the problem. Then I'd have to add more of my dry soil to kind of even it out. This, this sprayer will be a little deceiving. It'll look soaked, but when you go to move it, it'll barely have wet, wet anything. All right, you can see all the foam from the Thermex 70. So it's definitely foaming up. And I'm gonna let it absorb that for just a second here, and I'm gonna co come back and work that with my hands. While that's sitting there and absorbing the water a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and take my dome off. And then I'm gonna take this tray out. Sometimes I use these when I'm popping a whole bunch of seeds. But they're a little bit smaller, and for whatever reason, I like these beer cups. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and use that. I'm gonna make the, the rest of these. So um, why don't you walk with me in my office? You can stay right there, I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab a Sharpie so I can label this out. Don't mind the mess in my office. All right, got a Sharpie. Let's get this done. So I mentioned Sunshine Daydream. I'm gonna change the date to 1-4. Okay, these went in the water on 1-1. One, one. It's been three days of soaking, which I told you I don't like to do, but hey, it'll work. And then I'm gonna show you uh, the rest. Instead of labeling them all, I'm just gonna get lazy like I normally do at home. SD number two, that's Sunshine Daydream. SD number three. And SD number four. So now I have all of them labeled. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off the bottom. Like I mentioned, I take regular house scissors 
and I cut the corner off so you can see there's a little hole there and that'll allow the roots and water and everything to go through. Sometimes I'll do four, sometimes I'll do three. I think as long as you got two of them, you're pretty much good to go. If I'm doing a lot of cups, um, I'll probably only do two. If I'm doing only a few like this, I might do three or four. So it's kind of up to you. You can see if you shave a little off the corner, really works good. I used to try and poke holes in them and it just bends the plastic and keeps areas for soil to get caught and moisture to get caught. And so I like this style. So don't forget to clean up all the plastic scraps when you're done and you can reuse these quite a bit. All right, so now I've got the four cups. I'm ready to put my soil in and put my seeds in. Seeds are right here. And then um, I've also got some gnat nicks I'm gonna put on the top. Um, you can use rice holes. They're actually really flowable and they work good as a mulch layer. And those, um, I have these ingredients for making test soils and sending to the lab. So here's what a rice hole looks like and a lot of people use this for a mulch right on top of their little seedling cup. Looks really good and it, it keeps a barrier that, that blocks the light from drying out the top of your soil and it's so fluffy that your seed can grow right through it. The other thing is it keeps a barrier for all of our rich compost. If there happens to be a fungus gnat, since we don't sterilize any of the compost, um, this will keep a barrier so they can't come from your house and land in your beautiful soil or come from within the soil and actually come out. And so this barrier works. The best barrier for fungus gnats though, and a really good aeration is this gnat nix. So I'll grab this bag right now. You can see it's a really fine recycled glass material. I'll just bring this over here and we'll put those on the cups. Let's take a look back at the soil. You can see it's still kind of foamy. And if you look underneath, it's still dry. That's what happens when you have a soil that's not wet and you try and water it. It looks soaking wet, it's like bone dry underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this happen by putting my hands in there and getting the water to kind of spread through a little bit. And once I do that, I'm gonna do a squeeze test like I mentioned on the video yesterday and I'm gonna show you what the soil looks like. Now, now as I move the soil around with my hand, this moisture is evenly distributing pretty quickly. So now for the first time we're getting a clump. You see that? That is beautiful. That's the type of clump we want. It stays together, still breaks apart easy. It's not mud by any means. So I'm gonna keep going until this gets a little bit more homogenous. That way I can do my squeeze test as far as the dripping of moisture and see if we've got enough moisture in here, if we've got too much moisture in here. The color's changing, it's starting to look very dark. I wish I could send all the soil this moisture to you guys, but the weight is so heavy. It just kills us in shipping and it kills you guys in shipping and it's not good for the environment. And so we feel like as long as we teach you how to water it properly once you get it and we keep some good amount of moisture in there for the biology, everything will work really well. So check it out. I've got this soil, it looks perfect to me now. So I'm gonna squeeze it and see where we're at. Grab a clump. It's kind of hard with these big growth stone in there, but see how it clumps like that? I'm gonna try and squeeze some. And if you look, there's no moisture coming out. I can't get a drop of water out of there. But it's almost wet beating up on my hands right here like it was gonna wring a little bit of moisture out. That is perfect. That clumpiness, that texture, I could probably add a little bit more water and get a little bit more to beat up on me, but I feel like since I'm gonna miss the top afterwards, this is probably ideal. The other thing to keep in mind is there's not a ton of aeration in here. This isn't like a light seedling mix, so it's not gonna just dry out on you tomorrow, if that makes sense. I'm looking down here because I got the, the GoPro on. Um, all right, so if you squeeze it like this, perfect shape. And that's what I'm looking for, but if you tap it, just completely falls apart that's the moisture I want so I'm gonna start grabbing these I'll start with the first one and let's see SD number one I guess it doesn't really matter sunshine daydream okay now when I put it in my soil cup I like to shake it just a little bit and make sure that it settles sometimes there'll be like a rock or a chunk here in the bottom and there'll just be a hole there and then I like to go just about to this line right here that way I have more room to put the gnat nicks in and maybe you know top dress if I end up leaving them in here for a little while. You'd be surprised with this 3.0 soil and maybe a little less light, you can grow some pretty big plants out of these little cups. Um, I'm not gonna sex them in here. We're actually gonna take these as soon as they get healthy and there's roots coming out of the bottom. I'm gonna transplant these into their one or two gallon containers where we're actually gonna sex those. And once we determine whether they're male or female, I'm gonna show you how to cut, uh, take cuttings and root them. So um, I'm gonna put just a little more and I'm gonna go ahead and press this down with my fingers like this. I'm not pressing too hard. I'm probably putting five, 10, 15 pounds of force like at the most, maybe not even that, five or 10 pounds. Okay, it went down a little bit, so I'll just sprinkle just a little bit more. 
Okay, if there's a huge rock, you know, the growth stone are great. If there's a big one right there, maybe take it out. It's not gonna have too much factor, but that's all I do. So there's that. I'll put a hole right there with my finger and I don't wanna make it too deep. I only wanna go about a quarter inch deep, okay? And that will be set right here. I'm gonna quickly do the rest of these and then we'll get to the point where we pop the seeds in. So let me just pack these in real quick. Okay, looks pretty good. Perfect. I'm excited for these seeds. Sunshine Daydream from Bodie at Plantmore Seeds on Instagram if you don't follow him. Guy's got some amazing genetics and for whatever reason has been able to keep one of the best reputations in the industry. And you know, when I first started talking to him, I could tell why. He's just super humble, really helpful, and definitely passionate about what he's doing. And so that's part of the reason why I wanted to run some of his genetics in here for our test. All right, there we go. That in. Well, I don't want to look bad, and his genetics work really good. You know, not a lot of seed, um, not a lot of soil providers, and not a lot of hydro shops are actually going to have a grow because it's an it's a really easy way to fail in front of your audience. Um, most people struggle when they're gross, and they have times where it looks really ugly. And so, when we've got a grow going here, we've got to make sure it's perfect all the time. And I want you to experience that that same benefit at your house. And so, I feel like if we just step up to the plate, show you that it can be done, you can borrow from our confidence and start to see some of the things we might do differently than you're currently doing. So like I said, I'm just gonna put my finger in, make just a little divot, and now all of these are ready. I've got some extra soil for some more seeds or whatever I'm gonna do later. I'm gonna go ahead and take these now, and one of the things that I do is I usually pour out most of the water so it's easier to get to, and you can tell the seeds kinda of stay in the bottom. Okay, and then now there's just a tiny bit of moisture. I'm gonna go ahead and plop like that, and get all the seeds in my hand or get them to the edge of the cup, whatever's easier. And you can see my hands are kind of muddy, but you can clearly see the tap roots, the beautiful seeds. I'm gonna go ahead and take one. Now, if you've got one out of all of them that just doesn't have a tap root, you might wanna label that cup. So later on, you know that's the one, and if it germinates, then you have no issues. So that's totally up to you, but all these look good. I'm just gonna set the seed in there, and you wanna double check and make sure, see that stuck to my finger. I could have gone on to the next one and dropped it. Just be very aware that it does go in the marked area in the hole. The only thing that can happen here is you put it in the wrong spot or you don't pack the, the soil in, you go to water and your seed spins around and gets too deep. And all of a sudden it's five, six days later and you're not seeing the seed come up and you wanna dig in the soil and sometimes you can hurt your seedlings. Um, so you should see from this tap root here, once we put it in, I'm expecting to see maybe one of these seeds standing up tomorrow evening, if not by the next day and within two or three days, all of them will be broken through the soil surface. And then the other thing to consider here is the direction. In fact, let me talk about this on the last one. You can see that this one, I put horizontally, the tap root's going that way, and the seed's going that way. This one I put in, I just kind of dropped in, and I really don't usually care, but I do want to talk about this because it, a lot of people want to put this tap root straight down, as if the root needs to go down and the seed needs to go up. But typically what I'd prefer to see is either upside down or sideways, and the reason why is when you put the seed sideways or upside down, the tap root has to go like this and go down, and it knows how to go down. And then that makes the seed fold up when it stands up and it pulls the seed hole, the little cap, right off of the seed. If you put the tail straight down, you're gonna have a lot of seeds with a little shell stuck on the plant, and you're gonna wanna pick it off, and sometimes that causes problems. So put your seeds horizontal, is how I like to do it, or upside down if you're feeling comfortable. So I'm gonna drop that one in, and it looks horizontal to me. I'm gonna go through like this and just pull the soil over and press it flat. Pull the soil over, press it flat. Pull that soil over, press it flat. Pull that soil over, bam. So now it's tamped down, it's right in the center. So if I were to pour some water in here, like out of a water bottle, it would probably just have the water move around and soak in, it probably wouldn't stir the soil up. That's what we're after but I'm still not gonna pour any water. I'm gonna use my little sprayer to make sure I do it gently. That's about the right moisture, but I wanna make sure it's extra moist just on top. If you get it extra moist all the way through, it's gonna be too muddy because the seed's not gonna drink water for a while. I just want it to stay moist enough to germinate. So what I'm gonna do is take my sprayer, I'm gonna go through like this, and I'm just gonna do a two second little mist. Sometimes I'll kind of clean off the edges when I'm doing that. Okay. So that's about it. 
That moisture is going to go in there. The seeds are now done and covered. We're basically ready to put these. I could just put the dome on and set this down in my tent. Now here's the problem. These are flimsy. If you go to lift this up, you're going to drop your seeds everywhere. If you've got a whole bunch of them, sometimes they'll hold. I'm probably just going to take these out one at a time, set them down, and then go ahead and put my tray in the tent. But before I do that, I don't think you really need to see me set them in there. I'll be updating this video pretty quickly. I'm going to grab this gnat next and I'm going to cover them. And let me show you. In fact, if you're doing no-till, you can stay right there, but we've got a worm bin right here. You can see the gnat nicks in the top. The reason why is gnats love worm bins and the worms sometimes come with them and some of the inputs. We recycle old stuff, torn bags, whatever. You can see, as soon as I move it, you're going to see movement. See that? There's just thousands of worms in here and they don't mind the gnat nicks. They love it. It provides a barrier. It provides oxygen. There's nothing but perfect castings in there. And so I want to duplicate this right in my soil, create this barrier so the worms can be underneath it. Now, a lot of times I add worms right into my soil because these are in little tiny cups. I'm not going to add any worms. I'll just wait until we actually get to our one or two gallon and then I'll put a couple worms in there. So they start to get used to the entire ecosystem. One of the things I want to mention with this material here is it's pretty dry and there's a lot of dust that comes off of it. And it's a silica dust from glass that you don't want to breathe. And so if you've got a sprayer, you can go ahead and just spray it down like I'm doing. And that'll keep all the dust off or you can run a hose through it or you can just put a dust mask on um, and some goggles, whatever you feel comfortable doing. I'm doing a very small amount and I just sprayed it down. So I'm going to grab this cup. It's going to take a little bit. And I'm going to put enough where it doesn't cause a problem for the seed to lift it up. I could probably fill it up, but I'm going to do about halfway, like a quarter inch in there. And so now I spread that through. That should be easy for the seed to lift up. Take just a little out. All right, get that level. Okay. Okay. All right. Now there's no way any gnats are going to come in or out. And we've got a barrier blocking that bright light that's going to want to dry out the surface of the soil and consequently draw my seed out. Now it's going to reflect off this white surface. It's going to stay super moist underneath. And when I go to transplant, worst case, I have just a little added aeration. And this is recycled glass that's totally sustainable. It's a, it's a really killer product. I've helped people just knock out fungus gnat infestations with it, just following that barrier method. And once you get it wiped out, you can go back to top dressing, cover crop, everything right through the gnat nicks and it works really well. Okay, that's everything. I'm going to go ahead and turn this video off and I'm going to move these around and put the dome in here and then I'll update some photos and videos later as we start to get germination. I'll calculate how long it takes. I'll show you how big they get. Uh, but for now, those are all the details. I did the mulch. I showed you how to put the taproot sideways. Um, I talked about the humidity and the temperatures. And I don't think there's anything we're missing. If you've got any questions, leave them on this video here and I'll be, I'll be sure to double back and get them answered. I'm hoping to maybe do an audio transcript of this. You can download it, but a lot of times I just make these videos and shoot from the hip. And so they might bounce around a little bit. If there's a topic you want me to really get into or specifically cover, I can plan it out a little better. Just let me know. Um, but for now, Jeremy, build a soil. We got the sunshine daydream. And that was the seedling tutorial number two setup. Thanks.